with the Daily Guide. GNPC YDC USA partner, juvenile trial for Kaswa teen killers. We're excited over E. Levy. IMF is gone. And so the question that was posed to him by a journalist from Reuters asking if with all the indicators at the moment and inflation getting to 23.6%, we're likely to go to the IMF. And he says that, well, even IMF can see that we've put measures in place to ensure that the economy is stabilizing. So there's no way we're going back to the IMF. Ghana to host maiden AFDB group meetings and Owusu-Bio takes green Ghana to the UN. The finder, Afrochella with Jan as ambassador, should attract 20,000 investors, according to Dr. Awal. Uh, he's a tourism minister. And yesterday, Samoa Jan, the footballer, was made a tourism ambassador, along with the organizers of Afrochella, also made goodwill ambassadors. AFDB to meet in Accra to brainstorm Africa's economic recovery. You are not being fair to Africa. President Ekufado takes on global capital markets, credit ratings, agencies, and living with leprosy as an artist. 65 year old man shares his experience. The Ghanaian Times are the top left corner, top officers of eight assemblies in hot water to face prosecution over procurement breaches. And we have a photo of Mrs. Delise Mimi Dako. She is the CEO of FDA. Yesterday, they visited some branches of Marco after some reports on food poisoning. FDA shuts down restaurants over food poison allegations. We're told that um, four branches have been shut down at the moment, uh, pending investigation. ESA predicts brighter post-COVID-19 economic future. And since its establishment in 1963, Ghana to host historic AFDB AGM in Accra from May 23 to 27. Business and Financial Times, local pension funds increase activity on equities markets. Bullish outlook for large-scale gold production. Government to give maiden account of e-levy in mid-year budget as GRA courts uh, support of trade associations. AFDB meetings in Accra to set, stone for, to set uh, tone for Africa's transformation and recovery. And finally, the daily graphic, that big one. So... A Japa deal revived. We mustn't drop it, according to the finance minister. He says it's on his mind. The president uh, also has it in mind, and it's likely that we'll go ahead with it. Uh, cabinet approves national quality policy. It will guide production of quality goods and services. ESA calls for e-levy rate reduction and special supplements on Dasibre Otibwating and Nana Dani the second. In the studios this morning, it's a pleasure to have lawyer Kwame Jantwa. He's a member of the CPP and also the chairman, uh, Political Affairs Committee. Good morning. Good morning. It's good Barry. to have you back. It's good to see you. How I, are you? I'm good. Thank you very much. How about you? I'm very fine. All right. And my first time hosting him on the big issue, even though he's been here a number of times, Kofi Capito is the CEO of Consumer Protection Agency. Good morning. Good morning. I hope you're doing well. Uh, I'm doing very well, Miss Mondi. All right. Well, let's get into our first story for today. So yesterday... Uh, we saw some former toll booth attendants picketing at the Ministry of Roads and Highways. What is the reason? Well, remember that back in November, in fact, on 18 November 2021, the uh, roads minister at 12 a.m. announced, of course, that we were going to cease collection of road tolls along the highways and everywhere where we had toll booths. And this was a day after the finance minister had announced, um, you know, during the 2022 budget reading that we were likely to also stop collecting road tolls because we're losing a lot of money. It was causing too much traffic. And so even that, the roads minister was criticized for moving straight into that direction and saying that we should stop collecting road tolls. But he did mention that they will reassign all these road toll attendants so that they can also keep their jobs. Five months down the line, they have not been paid. They have not been reassigned. Let's take a look at a story that was put together by City TV, by the way. We'll come back and discuss. Well, what happened with the tools um, six months ago? We were at work when we were told that we were seizing the operation, and the uh, government made a promise that they were going to reassign every worker who was going to be laid off, and they were that they were also going to pay everyone until the reassignment was due. We've been sitting home for six months now. Not a single salary has been given to us. I will be sleeping here for a year. Because right now, as I'm speaking now, because I'm not having any job, they've invited me at home. I can't pay my rent. So today, I'm not living here without any good news, without my job. You know, as for me right now, I can get another way. But please, what about my colleagues, some of my colleagues who are disabled? What are they going to be doing? Some of them, they are even having parents, families, children, and all those stuff. So if me, 
because I can work, I can get something doing. So I should just abandon them on the way. No, my dear, I can't do that. We are a team. We are a team, so we are fighting for one cause, one purpose. We are here to sleep. We are here to stay. No job. We are not living. Again, credit to City TV for this report. I'll start off with you, Lawyer Janton. So five, six months down the line after promises were made that these people will still be kept on the payroll, they'll still receive their monies, and they'll be reassigned. Now they're picketing at the Ministry of Road saying, you did not fulfill your promise. Yeah, good morning good once morning. again. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning to our, our, our viewers. The whole road toll issue for me, if I can use the word, is disgusting for me. First of all, how can you make people unemployed and not compensate them when you said you've compensated them? The, the actual way it should be done is once you decide that this is what you're going to do, there's a pot of money there which you use to pay them off. Six months down the line, you've taken my daily uh, living from me and you haven't paid me. But let's face it, were we not getting money from the tolls? We're told that we're losing if, about if 80 percent of it. So, if we're losing 80 percent, aren't we losing money in other sectors? Have we closed them down? Isn't it a question of looking at the mechanism of the toll booths, and then probably what you then do is that you open more toll booths, and then raise the price. We go to Parliament and get them to raise the price a bit, mm. and get in more money. We are saying every peso counts in this country. Why have you closed? the toll booths. 79 million was what we were getting. Mm -hmm. Don't you think if we had opened more toll booths and raised the price slightly, because the tolls, it's up to you to pass through if you are going to Tema. If you like, don't go to Tema, through the motorway. Mm -hmm. Don't go to other places, you know, the trunk roads in this country. Don't go there. And you see, the, the most important thing is that you have not been able to account to us what that money was used for because the toll booths, the, the, the motorway and the other roads that have tolls on it are what they are. Mm. Ideally, what tolls are supposed to do is used to maintain the roads. Are there the potholes on the motorway? Has anybody come to account and say, we did X, we did Y? When you say this, oh, it's going to be in the budget. When they read the budget statement, do they go into detail? And how many people have the opportunity to take the whole budget statement and read through? You don't even do small booklets for people to understand what is in the budget. And if you don't have programs like this, where others can come and sit and analyze the figures in there, how do people get to know? I, I don't understand it, but their livelihoods. The gentleman who came on there, at least, and look at the two people who spoke. They speak good English. It goes to show that they have some education behind them. What about those who don't? Because I saw one or two people who were holding crutches there. Mm -hmm. what, what, what's going to happen to them? We must have some empathy for our people. And it's just not a question of because we've got it in our manifesto, we've got to do it. If the people do not like what you're doing, sit and listen to them. And don't wait till you've achieved what you want to achieve before you come and explain to them. It's wrong. This picketing, is it right? Do they have a choice? Well, what can they do? I'm not saying is it right that they are picketing. I'm mm. saying that the authorities, is it right for the people who, who are, are owed to go to the ministry and picket when you've promised them six months after? And look at what has happened in the last six months. Look at the price increases. Flour today is what? 400 cities a bag. Mm. People who are making bread and pastries are all giving up. Some of these people, that is what they eat in the morning. So if they don't have the money to afford that, how are they going to live? And you see, this is the challenge. Because if you read the national security document, it does say in there that the lack of unemployment is a huge risk mm. in this country. And you're not looking at it. It's the government's own document. It's the government's own document. You see, it's not, Bella, it's not just a question of we want money to do this, we want money to do this. It's a question of are we being able to make sure that what the people expect is what we're doing? And I don't, I don't think so. I, I, unfortunately, the empathy from this government is questionable to me. I, you know, it might not be for everybody, but to me it's questionable. Because the people you are ruling 
are the people who vote you into power. And you've got to listen to them. They are the government. You are a caretaker. And you are there to serve me. You are not there. I'm not there to serve you. And so if you have come and you've promised me, you've taken my job away from me, and you've promised me, and you haven't fulfilled the promise, what do you expect me to do? Minister, he gets up, sits in his car, goes home, he eats. How many of them have eaten breakfast that morning when they went to stand there? How many? But that's the thing. I mean, if you listen to the roads minister, he did a U-turn because when he was being vetted ahead of becoming a minister for the uh, second time, he did say that he was thinking of increasing road tolls because we were losing a lot of money and they're looking at generating some more money so we can fix our roads. But after the finance minister made that announcement during the 2022 budget reading, he suddenly went ahead and passed a directive and said, stop collecting. Even that, the Speaker of Parliament spoke against it and said he had no right and no power to even cancel the collection of road tolls until it was passed in Parliament. At that point, it was just a proposal. Let me and tell he you still something. still went ahead. Let me tell you something, Bella. In 2002, I used to run the toll booth at Adome Bridge. Mm. When I won that uh, 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 contract, contract yeah. I went to the highways and I said to them, look, some of the people we hire, there could be a lot of thievery. Mm. So let's try and digitalize this uh, toll booth thing. Mm. And let's start with an example at Adomi Bridge. I discovered in the UK at the time, they had brought a gadget which you can put underneath the road. Mm. And because it's, 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 it's digital, you can also link it to your computer. Mm. So every car that passes is counted. Mm. And when it gets onto your computer, whatever you're paying for every car that passes is also tabulated. So at any given time, you know the number of cars, you know how much uh, uh, you're getting. Mm. They rejected. They said no. Did they give a reason why they rejected it? They, they said they haven't gotten, they wouldn't have the money to do I even brought a sample. I brought a sample of the gadget. Mm. So that was 2002. What about today? Would they not have advanced in technology with this type of, of, of thing? And who is, and you know, we say we are doing, we are digitizing. Why aren't we thinking of digitizing the toll booths? Because we get money from the toll booths. It's immediate money today in real time. Why aren't we doing that? And we've abandoned it. In fact, when you pass through the motorway, it's even disgusting. For you to pass and ask yourself, ah, we are passing through. Why, why aren't we collecting tolls? And what's the reason government is giving? Because what? Because uh, traffic, traffic. It's isn't there? Too much traffic it doesn't it doesn't cause, much that, anyway. Don't we have traffic in this country? When I was coming, the quantum of traffic on the road. So what are we talking about? And even if there's traffic, don't you find ways to make sure that the traffic is 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 is, is not that heavy? I, I don't understand it. I don't understand the thinking. Okay. Maybe, maybe maybe well. I'm not a Ghanaian, so maybe... Yeah, You're not I a Ghanaian? Well, what can I say? <laughs> what can I, I say? Because it's, Bella, it's a question of effective communication. That's the first point of call. This is what we want to do. Let's go through the process. Stakeholders, come, let's talk about it. Okay, this is what civil society is saying. This is what this is saying. Okay, government, okay, we will try as much as possible to adjust what we're doing. Then we all move on. The gov governance is not governance from one side. It's governance with the people. This government doesn't seem to be doing that. Kofi, do you agree? Because I remember that the Deputy Majority Leader, Anabo Alexander Fenyamakin, spoke at one of these e-levy town hall meetings. And he was explaining why we needed the e-levy, which, by the way, would come and replace the collection of the toll booths anyway, uh, at the toll booths. Because he said that we're not generating enough money. And so we don't even have enough to fix the roads. We don't have enough to pay contractors. So we're struggling. So instead of wasting so much time at the toll booths trying to collect money that we're not even able to generate enough revenue for, why not collect the e-levy so we can use that to pay contractors? I remember that the Minister of Roads even said it as well, that pay the e-levy so we can pay road contractors and we can fix your roads. So between the two, they thought that it was wiser to collect e-levy and cancel collection of tolls. Yeah, brother, let me say good morning to you and good morning to my old brother. Uh, him and I, we go way back way like Spanner Court. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you know... <laughs> I'm laughing because they say what? They were not making money? Mm -hmm. Or they were losing money? We were losing between 40 to 80% of the revenue. Well, that was why were they losing generated. it? The question we should have asked them there, why were they losing it? Ask anybody, especially uh, if, you are, if you live in 
the East Coast of America. Uh, I lived in Washington, D.C. Mm. Their biggest source of revenue, as you and I speak, is tow mm -hmm. and packing fee collection. In Washington? Yes. Okay. Anybody that lives in New York, they talk about congestion. I don't know whether you've been to New York and you've left from JFK going somewhere. Mm. Uh, have you seen the bridges when they are mm. toes? Yeah. We are lazy. We're lazy? Yeah, so it's as simple as that. How so? Because we are. And, and we can get away with it. You give a job to somebody, mm. he doesn't know, if one, how to execute. <laughs> Two, he wouldn't even ask for any help. Three, if it's offered to him, he will mm. refuse it. Because he, th he thinks you are coming to expose him. I mean, for crying out loud, how difficult it is to, to, to collect tolls. On the motorway, we did that, is it yeah, uh, EPA or Express Pay? Yeah. What has happened to it before they collapsed it? My car, when I'm going from Washington, D.C. to New York, I have something that is called e -pass. It's more like a little chip, a little on thing my on my windscreen. I mean, if I don't have cash and I don't want, I, I want to not wait in line. Mm. I go in the express lane. That thing counts every car that goes through, like Kwame was saying. The device is there. And you know, you know, I mean, sometimes you don't want to say so that your friends and people that you are close to will get offended when they see you, they will squeeze their faces at you. Is but like I do? said, it is laziness. Pure laziness. How long have you been towing the Tamamo uh, motorway? Mm. I remember as a kid, Tamamo motorway was towed. Mm. So, what, 30 years, 40 years later, we can improve it? And I agree. Maybe what we were paying was also uh, small. Mm. You cannot tell me that when I drive from here to Kumasi, I pay, I have a 4 by 4 I pay three CDs. It is ridiculous. How much should we have been paying? If you want good roads, you should pay between five to ten cities at every point. The minister was considering increasing the road tolls. It would have been perfect, but he, he needed to explain it to us and tell us that this is what I'm going to do with the money, or this is where the money... You see, Ghana, they collect our money. They don't tell us what they use our money for. Mm, the That's the problem. Look, if you collect my money... Well, let's assume that this morning... Uh, uh, your better half says, I'm going to work. Take this money and go and fix, fix me dinner when I come back. Mm. When you go to the market and the lady is not there, blah, 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 you can't even get things to come and fix the dinner. When your other half comes and you don't explain to him that, oh, it's not intentional that I didn't cook, mm -hmm. but the woman that sells the tomato was not there. The meat was not the right meat. Mm. He would understand if you tell him that. Mm. But if you don't give, give him any reasons, he will get angry. That is human nature. The question is, what are we doing as Ghanaians? Look, it is interesting, and this is what I say. It's good to have a certificate. It's also equally good if you have experience. Mm. Ghana, we dwell too much on certificates. Without mm, exposure, even experience, even. nothing. Mm. Because he has a, a certificate. Mm. He has a PhD. He has co minini, co minini. In the other jurisdictions, if you go to Germany, the PhDs don't matter. If you go to America, PhDs don't matter. It's the people who do the practical things. I mean, look at the people in the world now who are doing all these wonderful things. Which, which one of them has a PhD? Mm. But in Ghana, if you don't have a PhD, you don't get an you don't get any appointment. It doesn't make any sense. Practicality, common sense. How difficult. Accra is congested. Mm. Do you know how much money we can make on the streets of Accra? Parking fees? Mm. Uh, on an hourly... You see, they won't give it to me in Accra mm -hmm. because somebody will say, I'm not a gang boy. As the mayor. Yeah. Same thing in Kumasi. They won't give it to 
you because you are not an Ashanti woman. Mm. It doesn't make any sense. Aren't we Ghanaians? Even if you have the experience and the no, wherewithal. I, Bella, Bella, I came to Accra when I was about 10, 9 years old. Mm. I know Accra more than Kumasi because I spent my adult life in Accra. I speak mm. I'm more connected to Accra. Mm -hmm. But the way with Ghana, it doesn't matter, you know, where you. 20 years, 30 years, and they still would fix you to your original, where your parents and your grandmothers mm -hmm. come from. So I'm okay that they say I'm an Ashanti. But the question is, my, 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 my experience in Ghana is with Accra. Mm -hmm. If somebody was to say that, nominate, hey, Wahala. Mm -hmm. Should the minister be surcharged? It's, it's something that a group asked uh, Parliament we, to we, consider we, we can't do sometime it. We, in March. We cannot do it. So in I'm a not, vote of censure. We cannot, we cannot do it. So, Bella, I will not even support <laughs> that. Thing. So, so there was Bella. a group, an anti graph pressure Bella, group, Bella, Crusaders understand. Against Corruption Ghana. They Bella, petitioned Bella, the Bella, Speaker Bella, understand. to surcharge the minister Bella. because we've lost, up until this time, about almost Bella. 40 million Ghana Bella. cities you gone. Know, you know, from it's, road it, tolls. it's not even the Speaker. If Ghana was as it organized as most of the developed countries, any individual could have taken the minister to court. Any individual. Any but, individual. But didn't the Minister of Finance indicate that with the toll booths, it seemed they hurried on that, on that particular mm. thing. Mm. So what is he doing about it? Mm. And I thought when the president came to give the State of the Nation address, and could you, sorry, uh, Kofi, sorry, mm -hmm. State of Nation address, he would even tell us that we did a mistake on road tolls, we would look at it and see if we can bring it back again. Did he say it? No, he didn't. You know, I'll tell you one of the reasons why maybe they were losing money. Because I witnessed some member of parliament, mm. and that day I wanted to cause trouble. I was going to Kumasi. Mm. That Bohankra, the mm. last one before yes. you, you get to Kumasi. I saw this big member of parliament zoomed. Got to the toll. He didn't even stop. I also zoomed. I wanted them to arrest me. Mm. And I, I would have costed his arrest as a Ghanaian. Because nobody except you are giving no, but a pass. A pass or something. Big men don't pay tolls in Ghana. They, they don't call big men. They don't. They don't. They don't. So why would they lose money? In other jurisdictions. Look, you see, when you tell people, like, we're going to talk about the electricity. Yeah. I mean, it's annoying. That Jubilee House doesn't pay its bills. White House pays its bill. Ten down the street, pay, everybody pays their electricity bill. But the question with the toll, we could have made more money. I mean, when they were doing this, is it community, the exit before... Yeah. Uh, mm. Community 18. On the, on the motorway. On the motorway. Yes, yes. I wanted to, them to give it to me and I'll privatize that road because it is called an access road. Mm. In most jurisdictions, mm. if you want easy, you pay for the access. Okay. Do you know how much money we could have made on that thing? It is free. If you don't want to use it, then go all the way to the motor, uh, tema, motorway Mo yeah. roundabout mm -hmm. and turn into Tema. If, but if you want to get to Lashibi, Community, 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 that exit, you will pay. It's called an access road. So did you put forward this request? Oh, they don't even care what are you telling me. So you did tell them? You tell the, you tell the person in charge, he doesn't care. Because he doesn't even understand. He, uh, uh, what is the guy in Kumasi? I can't, yeah. they, they can't think far. They can't think far. Because first of all, they don't see how feasible it can be done. This is easy. You put the machine, just like motorway and other tolls that were there. If you don't pay, I mean, I was amazed when we could even tow the other roads because I was ah, so. If you can organize the tow, at least majority of the people were paying. Mm. Why can't we even expand it? Why can't we even make it? They talk about the uh, traffic. How the hell do you construct a tow booth and approaching the tow booth? The road is the most nonsense road. Look at the way we, we, we the, 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 the distance before all our toes. Efienya. Mm. Efienya is yeah. one. Yeah. Uh, uh, the one here. Kuma, uh, the, the first one. In after, the one? Yeah, here. Yeah. Look at the nonsense there. 
Sapema, yeah. nonsense. And then people don't understand why people get angry. Look, other jurisdictions, that's why they brought the express lanes. Mm. So that you buy, it's a monthly pass or a yearly pass. So people that live in Tema, people that work in Tema, that plow the road every day, I don't have to be in a trotro. Even the trotros can even buy it because that is the road that they ply. Gofi, let me give you an example. You drive into the center of London ah. today. <laughs> There's no toll booth, yeah. but you need to get a, a, sticker a sticker on your car. Yeah. And they can. They can charge you. It comes to your address. Yeah. We say we have an electronic address system. If you, 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 at the present moment, if we even had that system, would we be able to charge people and take the bills to their house? Kwame, talking about that, let me tell you. <laughs> my personal story, Bella. I went to UK, rented a car. Uh, like he said, I didn't even know mm -hmm. I had gone through one of those cameras. So I returned the car and I come to Accra mm -hmm. with Ghana driver's license and a Ghana post address. Mm -hmm. One day I go to Cantonments, open my box, City of Westminster. They've sent me a, 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 a fine mm -hmm. because I rented a vehicle, it wasn't mm -hmm. my vehicle. Mm -hmm. The rental company have a system. The Westminster people was able to send me a fine. Yeah, into your P.O. Yeah. box, cantonments. Try to write a letter to any ministry. Acknowledgement, cry zero. So this is how we treat ourselves. Look, we, 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 because we are, we are Ghana, Ghana, do you know the problem of Ghana? Ghana, you are raised to be timid. You are raised not to ask questions. Mm. You are trained not to even challenge authority. You are even uh, 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 not even allowed even to ask your big sister, your big brother, why are you doing this? This is the only country that your big brother beats you. And then you probably insult him or take a stone and hit him and the parents tell you you are the younger one. Apologize to him. <laughs> you know, these are the and, kind and of things. it runs through. It yeah. runs through. Yeah. It runs this through. is the problem of Africa, especially Ghana. Are, are you, are, do you understand? Yeah. At my age, and I told one guy, I said, Master, stop this thing. Because Jesus Christ died at the age of 33. We still worship Jesus Christ. I am 60-something years old. Mm. I'm a grandfather. Not just one, even four times. I'm, I'm a great-grandfather now. So how dare you tell me that, oh, you young man. I say, eat that. You see, that is that the authority feels nobody can charge them. But like Kwame said, it's for the people, by the people. The power resides in us. Mm. But unfortunately, we've given it freely. And they are abusers. And I like that you brought that up. A lawyer bring you in because, again, the speaker spoke on this matter and said that as a minister, you have no right. Parliament has to approve on the budget before you can even go ahead and pass a directive that stop collecting tolls. But it ended there. You would expect that maybe Parliament would have even done more to ensure that they reverse that directive. So but Be even till date. So, Bella, when I tell you that sometimes the value is the same, am I wrong? Am I wrong? The whole Speaker of Parliament, he has said this. What was the next step? Sanction the man. Let the people say you're doing your work. So that next time, another minister doesn't do the same thing. But if the NDC come into power, and one of the ministers does that, will the MPP sanction them? If we have a, a Speaker who isn't from, from, from their party. You see, we've taken the people for granted. That is the challenge. We've taken the people for granted. And the people too have, in, 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 in Ashanti, we say a word, Omamwa. They are scared to open their mouth. Look, sometimes yeah, more, I, I said, I said, sometimes I get messages. I said, I said, sometimes <laughs> I get messages. Mr. Jantua, be, be measured in your conversations oh, on TV. I ain't gonna. Mr. Jantua, be very careful what you're saying. Hey, aren't you am, I, am I insulting somebody? <laughs> am I not expressing? some of the frustrations that I find that government isn't doing that I expect them to do. Isn't government there to serve me? But in this case, I mean, even if the speaker 
uh, raises it, the majority will kick against it, which is what they did, because he doesn't have that power to unilaterally sanction the minister. And why, why, why would the, the, the majority kick against it? So if it is wrong, because they are in his party, they should clap for him? It was the same minister who came to tell us that they are going to collateralize what? Mm. Is it E. Levy? E. Levy, yes. Huh? What did they do to him? What did their party do to him? What did their party do to him? Let's listen to that part. Koko, if you can play, because yesterday the minister was asked about E. Levy, and he gave an indication that it's likely um, that we could collateralize it. Let's take a look at that. Your question was whether we'll give you an assurance that it won't be, what, collateralized? Assurances. Uh, really, uh, where is the economy going? What are the instruments that we have uh, in our basket, and how do we deploy them? Unless you are categorical or you know something that I don't know, that collateralization is bad. So I, I will not give you an assurance. I will at each point in time examine what we have and take a decision of cabinet as to how best to use the resources of our country. Uh, I'm very confident that it opens a whole new vista um, for our tax handles uh, and a way in which all Ghanaians uh, would also be paying something. Um, I don't know of any um, program which has um, technology involved that will not have teething problems. Um, but certainly uh, the cataclysmic you know, pronouncement by our people on the other side, it's not happening. Um, I think we pretty much um, have it under control as much as you can. We started on May 1st. We were blessed with that being a period of a holiday for three, four days. So we saw um, the issues and began to tackle them. Um, will there continue to be um, certain um, technical issues? There will be, uh, but certainly not the Amegadon. And that was pronounced um, for us. And that's the finance minister. He says that unless you have evidence that collateralization is bad, he doesn't see why that conversation should be off the table. Joining us this morning also is the PRO of the GPRT. who we'll delve deeper into the issue of transport fares. Um, Mr. Basi Moro is here. Good morning and thank you for joining us. Let's just take your views, uh, gentlemen, on what the minister said about e-levy and the fact that if... Well, we have I, no I from day one, knew ELV was a way for us to be able to go and prove to a creditor that I, can, I have this source of revenue coming in. So if you give me money, I'll be able to pay. Mm. It's as simple as that. Mm. The question is, they're talking about development and all those things. Uh, let's even mm -hmm. assume they, if they get $6 billion. Would that be able to fix all the development that we are talking about immediately? No. But now they can justify, go to a creditor and say, mm -hmm. you know what, in, um, in August, mm -hmm. they can get about $2 billion because based on the fact that by the end of the year, they can get four point something billion. If you show that to anybody in the financial sector, that is what they, they believe in numbers. Mm. So once they see the numbers, they will allow you. And that's what the minister is asking. Is it bad? I mean, no, it is not. It's not a bad idea. I'm not saying it's a bad mm -hmm. idea. Mm -hmm. But the question is, they should say that is what we intend to do. Don't hide and say and ask me, is it that bad? No, you should tell me that it's not bad. Mm. Don't throw it at me for me to confirm what you want to do because I already know what you intend to do. You have to confirm it to me that I am going to take the numbers because, look, the reason why they can't go to the IMF because of conditionalities. Mm. They don't want to go. But on the open market, the conditions are a little bit different. Which are more expensive. Yeah, but at least, you know, he will, he will have the money to pay. Uh, be, be, hoping that we can meet this... Six billion or four point something billion that we all intend to make out of e levy. Mm. Let's hope we make that money. Let's hope that because we can make that money, we can get enough money to do the developments that we are demanding or they or they have promised. Mm. 
roads and, and, yeah, and, 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 and all those things. But if you're going to use it, and at the end of the day, you cannot do that, then you put Ghana in more danger because the conditionalities in case you go to the IMF again will be worse. Kofi, let me ask you a question. Mm. Kofi, let me ask you a question. In as much as they indicate that they will collect X amount of money, depreciation of the CD mm. is key. That depreciation of because you are not collecting the money in dollars, or collecting in CDs. So if there's depreciation, would you be able to use that money to pay for what you've collected? But is that probably why but, they also re reviewed the figure? Because initially we we're supposed to make about six point nine billion. Now, now, now they, they say four billion. They, they reviewed it because of the time scale. Mm. That's why they reviewed it down. Mm. It's not because of uh, depreciation, because they don't want to talk about that side. They don't want to talk about the inflationary uh, 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 pressures that can be put on this thing. Right now, I, when I was coming, I was listening to the news. They said by August, if we are not careful, we don't do the right thing, inflation can go can up to 40%. Yeah. So the money you've collected hasn't it shrinked? And if you collateralize, have you not locked yourself in? Do you know what is going to happen in the future? that you need money to do X, Y, Z, but you've locked yourself in. Where are you going to get the money from? And you can't continuously tax the people when you're not even increasing their salaries. And what then happens? Corruption becomes rife because people can't make two ends meet. Abbas, let me bring you in. I mean, from where you sit as the PRO for the GPRT, what's your take on E-Levy? <clears throat> well... As a family man, I wouldn't say I'm happy with it because the taxes are so much on all of us. Mm. So I wouldn't consider that since we are struggling. Civil servants are looking for co cost of living allowance, mm. et cetera, et cetera. So this is my take on this it. This is your take. But yes. of course, they mentioned that they will use a part of it to fix the roads. Drivers have complained constantly how bad our roads have been in the last uh, you know, number of years. And so if they are collecting this and they're telling you that pay more if you want the roads to be fixed, so that you also have to always go back to the mechanic to fix the parts of your car, is that not a good After thing? After all that we are paying. <laughs> my, my, my brother knows it. We <laughs> will meet at times with him. About 12 Taxes, levies, and margins on olive oil alone. We've been paying legally on all documentations that we need to pay for before hitting the road. The DVL, if you, you have a car, I mm -hmm. don't know if it is only the commercial. You look at the payments, if they uh, explain it, you've been paying for even road, so it's inclusive. Mm. So what else do they want from us? What again? They want from us. So for you, really, looking at all the, that I, we're paying, I, I we have, shouldn't have I have spoken my mind. Mm. This is Abbas. As a Ghanaian, I've spoken my mind. But at the same time, there's also increment in fuel prices, and it has translated into um, you increasing. The GPRT announcing the 20% increment. It's come with a lot of, you know, diverse opinions. Yes. Of course, the Ghana Road Transport Coordinating Council said that you did not even consult them. I remember I spoke to you on this matter earlier, yes. and you said that you're an autonomous institution. Yes, and I told you they are jokers. Ah, I, yeah. I did say that. Yeah. Yes. If they are much concerned about the plight of a driver, they wouldn't have come up with that. In case we are living air as a brother or as a partner and we do not consult them, the way they came out, is that the way, is, that, is there any maturity in it? Why do you say that? Yes, because they create confusion. They created a lot of problems mm. behind the scene. Mm. I might not be in the car. They might not be in the car where that confusion was created. Meanwhile, we signed a communique with them. Mm. And the communique was dated 12 February 2022. What was their understanding for the communique we signed, the, especially the second paragraph of that communique? What, what were they looking at? What was their understanding for that communique? What we was signed, this communique? Stating that mm -hmm. when the fuel price hit the threshold of 10%, we are going to increase the law first. Mm. And Lo and behold, where we are today, it has double or triple. So if they are not concerned about the situation, if they are not concerned about the plight of a professional driver, and we did because we have the followers, we have the membership, mm. and the drivers are on our nerves. Mm. 
What mm. is our problem? Each time we meet to look at these issues, it is the GPRTU who present the proposals. Have they ever pro pre presented the proposals before? But what do you do? So you present it to them? Not to them. We are not to under government. them. To okay. government. The transport ministry. Mm. But they are always involved. They join us. Exactly. So that we dialogue on it. So this is where I, 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 I say, and I'm repeating it, that what they did was also wrong. In case we are with them as partners and we refuse to call them, mm. that my brothers look at where we are. Mm. And we did that with a very good explanation. Mm. Because at one time, they speak as if they are the PRO for the uh, transport ministry. So such a person, how do you consult him on your programs? But there are some energy experts who also came out and said that the timing was wrong because fuel prices have stabilized on the international market. There's a prediction that it's even going to go down further. And so at this point that you've increased by 20%, if the fuel prices on the international market go down, would you even review your prices as well? If I answer, if I answer, no, Jesus Christ, when the Pharisees want to be sure he's the Messiah, they ask him question. And he also answered with a question. Mm. He answered what did Moses told you. Mm -hmm. And he explained it. He told them what Moses told you. Go and do it. If it is the expert that I had discussion with at the joy, you heard me saying that he's telling nice stories to children. Mm. If in the near future, fuel prices will be reduced, what about today? We are talking about the current situation, the suffering in which we are. Why civil servants are asking for cola? Mm. Meaning there's something wrong. So we have to make sure we live, uh, liberate our people from the current suffering. But there's we, always... we, are, we are leaders. Mm, carry on. And we don't have to allow our members to force us into something. You were in this country when 6 December issue cropped up. Mm, I remember. None of us is happy about what we saw. I'm a family man. Mm. I was married to three women minus one. So I'm now having two. two. You can imagine it. Okay. See, I come from a very large family. I see. I come from a very so we are not happy increasing fuel prices, uh, uh, lorry fares. We are not happy to affect all of us because I have to give my children more money to pay before going mm -hmm. to school. My some of my family members depends on me. Mm -hmm. I have to make sure I also help them out. We are not happy. What happened since December was not something we should, as leaders, make sure that thing comes again. I mm. saw someone carrying the grandchild or his child on the shoulders to, to school. school. Mm. Definitely the child has to go to school. You have paid for the school fees. Some of the people have to go and get medication mm. or have to visit their hospital for review. Mm. They have the money all right. There's no vehicle for them. Should one of these people died between this period, we did not cause it, but we are part of it. And these are we are all religious men. Mm. I can't claim to be a righteous man, but at least we all try to live a righteous life. So instead of striking, that is why you decided to go ahead. Because, because you had written to government. Because we don't, and government, since 17th March, since 17th March, at least acknowledge receipt of our letter. They haven't? They haven't. Till date, even Til, now that you've increased your well, now they have invited us to a meeting today. We are praying and hoping that when we get there, God should guide us so that we solve it properly. So what if they agree to review the prices of fuel? On, under which circumstances? Under which circumstances are they going to reduce the current cost of oil price? If the answer is no, then don't talk about that. Lawyer, you've listened to Abbas. At he what, says that they had no choice. Point, at what point in the international fuel price do you reduce prices? Mm. The benchmark price for the budget that was used was $57. Mm. Few, uh, 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 crude has gone up, it went That's even right up to 130. 130. Yeah. Back to it's now 109. Mm. Are you saying because it's come down to 109, you've got to drop the prices? It is still high. It is still high. Not unless it comes down to probably 60. Then you start looking at it. But I ask the question, who is doing the research? Mm. Isn't it up to government to do that research? Isn't it up to government to make sure that the people and drivers understand the nitty gritties of when you say fuel prices have gone up and fuel prices have come down? 
because it comes down by one dollar. Oh, you have to reduce prices. And it's people's livelihoods. It's people's livelihoods. We can't just shush them away because what? He's a trotter driver or he's driving an articulated truck. He is providing a service. Hmm. Six March, what happened? That ser six December, December that service yeah. wasn't being provided. Yeah. What happened? We need to be able to give respect to everybody, irrespective of how little they are contributing to the economy. Mm. And we need to be fair. Look at the tax exemptions we give out. Are they more important than those providing a transportation service in this country? And then you ask the question, okay, if that is the, the, the question, 6 December, if we had an efficient public uh, system, mm. transport system, wouldn't it have helped? Do we have it today? Is anybody talking about it? Isn't it government's responsibility to make sure that we have an effective public system? Me, I've sold my car in London. I don't need it. Mm. I sold it. Because the public system is efficient. And I can catch it and time wherever I'm going, buy it. Can you time it here? Can you time it here? Haven't we got to a stage in Ghana where we should have an, e an e effective uh, public uh, transport system? Look, I always say, me, I transcend the old into the new. Mm. He transcends the old into the new. When we were children, you can time going to school by the buses. Mm. Very Ghana, easy. In Ghana. In Ghana. Oh, sorry. Yes, it was part of it. You can time it. You can leave your house five minutes to time and get to the bus stop. The bus will be there. What went wrong? What went wrong? And if we had an effective public transport system, won't a lot of people park their cars and join it? Would that not even save us money on the roads? Who is doing the research? Don't you think even if you had trams in this country, it would help? You just take from Circle to to, Bacola, uh, to to the Central Business District. If you had a tram running through, mm -hmm. would it not help? The promise sky trains. Oh, please, is that possible? Is there a sky train in America and Britain that we compare ourselves to? Let's be realistic. And even if you won't do it in the center, do it in the outskirts. Mm. Who is thinking for us? And this is what I say. It's not just a question of we want money, we want money, we want money. What is the plan? And I keep saying, and I'll continue saying, manifestos aren't helping us. We've got to move away from that. And do and, what? And look at development plans hmm. where we can all sit and agree. This year, for the next four years, we are putting in an effective public transport system. We are bringing in good buses. We are going to train people, build capacity. We are going to educate and change the people's mind. Who is doing it today? And today, coming from uh, my house in West Legon, mm -hmm. I got to Standard Board. Come and see the traffic. The traffic. There's not even a policeman there directing. <coughs> is it good for pollution? All these cars standing in traffic with their engines on. Is it good for pollution? So who is thinking for us? Kofi, I mean, I do understand if the GPRT says that times are hard, we have to pay. But looking at the inflation rate at the moment, Ghanaians are paying more for literally everything. Their salaries have remained the same. And they are now complaining that, I mean, I used to pay two CDs for church, and now I'm paying, what, 11 CDs over time. That's a bit too much. I agree. But I can also sympathize with my brother Abbas. He and I, we've <laughs> been talking. and You see, I'm a little bit... I understand exactly what, what they are saying. The last time, uh, actually, I pleaded with them mm. because they wanted more, uh, which was um, why they agreed to 15%. I think they wanted about 30%. We were talking about 30%. Yes. Uh, but I told them in a meeting with the minister that uh, when two elephants fight, is the grand surface. Yes, I agree they can tussle with the ministry and all that, mm. but we the passengers. So they agreed and said, okay, first they, were, they even wanted 20. Mm. Then they said, okay, they will agree to 15. Uh, with condition that uh, they will come back mm. for, in case anything changes, 
they will come back and ask for. Yeah. Uh, so I was hoping that if things have changed, they would have added the 15%. And not 20? Not 20. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay, so that at least 5% would have been a cushion. Mm -hmm. uh, and he's saying that they wrote to the ministry, uh, acknowledgement zero. I've said this before, he even mentioned it. And my worry is the minister was not in town. Okay. You know, and you know in Ghana, uh, we don't do things when the big man is not around. But there's a deputy. No, and, we no, have but, deputies. No, no, you see, I agree. But that's why I say in Ghana, we don't do things until the big man is around. Look, when Nanado appointed the ministers, he warned the deputies. He was in, in public. He told them that you cannot challenge your minister. So how do you expect a, minister, a deputy minister to take a decision when the minister is not there? But if there's an emergency... I agree, Bella, but this is, a, this is our country. I get to my point. Mm. This is a country that when the chief director has traveled, mm. we don't know when he's going to come back. Documents are not signed. Mm. And we pretend as if if the minister dies or the chief director dies, the ministry too will collapse. This is how we do things. We don't designate mm -hmm. authority. Minister is not there. Who is there? Yes, they would designate some little powers, you know, but the bigger decisions, the deputies cannot take it. And it's, not, it's nothing new. It's been going on for a very long time. That is the kind of country you and I live in. Mm. Okay? Mm -hmm. This is a country that you even call a PR of a ministry about an issue or an institution about an issue, he tells you, unless I get permission from our boss. You know, uh, recently, one of your sister stations did this expose on the mortuaries. Mm -hmm. I mean, I did a show on my, uh, 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 yeah. uh, two, two days ago on Wednesday. We tried to call them. They, they said finished. they need permission from their bosses. Okay, mm -hmm. that is a problem. So the question, I would plead with my brother Abbas here again. I don't know whether it's too late. He said we are meeting today. So I hope that maybe they would forgive the 5%. Uh, maybe even more. But, but he said that <laughs> no, no, even, I'm not, I'm not, I understand what I he said. I guess saying. even this 20% <laughs> yes. is exclusive of um, lubricants, oh, spare parts. Everything. So this is just the fuel. price of fuel yeah, this on the time, market. This time we are going to add inflation also. Oh, Wait, are you going to increase it again? No, I'm asking the next time he's, we are going to they, they, they come out with calculation. We <laughs> add inflation. <laughs> Abbas, Abbas, Abbas. You, Abbas, you know what? I, we, 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 are we, we are citizens of this. No, we are. Of so, this, our beautiful nation. Beautiful nation. And so I, I, let me take this opportunity. To deny Let's, let me right. take this opportunity to plead on behalf of Thank you. No, don't go further. You're passing this. <laughs> so do you agree that you take off that 5%? I'm not your final No, no, no. Presenting my people. I beg you. Go and tell Nana. Go and tell Nana that. I'm pleading with him as I pleaded the last we time. We have two Nana, switch of them. Uh, Nana uh, Bresiama is our chairman. The, the chairman. Nana Bresiama. Nana Bresiama is our vice chairman. No, no, the chairman. Oh, okay. okay. You see, okay. Yeah, that at least, hear the cries, you know, you, oh, my brother. you mentioned Jesus and Moses. At so least, at least, hear the cries I, I of the people. I want to even to, to in the further. You know how we are. Yes, yes. I mean, normally, we don't struggle mm -hmm. with issues when it comes to Let's find out how best we could solve problems. Mm. But by then, do we have to be so loose that our people will even descend on us and make sure things that we don't expect also happens? If the answer is no, that's exactly what we are doing. Well, but you know, but let, okay. me, let, me, let me ask this question. It's always baffled me. Looking at Dubai, mm. 40 years ago, it was a complete desert. We're talking about development yeah. here. They had one commodity, which is oh, oil. Yeah. Mm. And I'm wondering what plan, because you also have oil. Mm -hmm. did, they, did they put in place for them to get to the state that they are in today? Because if we have oil, if we have all this, if they mortgage their resource for 100 years, Let's also mortgage it for a thousand years 
and then do development with it, proper development, not this mediocre. But that's the idea of one man as against changing we are not getting, political parties. I get you, but I'm the, just saying. If the development plan, as Kwame mentioned, is to take that us to the strong. promised land, mm. okay, we want good roads, mm -hmm. we want good schools, we want good health services, we want employment, mm -hmm. we want good policing, we want all these things. So the question is, it's not about NDC, MPP. It's about Ghana. The manifestos, I agree. Some don't help us. Because even your manifesto, if you promise to do something that once you get there, you can't do it, then you leave the Ghanaians at risk. We went to Seichi. Mm. I was a member mm. of, uh, you know, it was funny. The way people who even went were even accused and attacked because they feel like, oh, it is NDC. Same way NDC is also calling for another, Forum, yeah. you know, I'm sure if somebody goes, they will also accuse him. We should stop this nonsense. It's about Ghana. This NDC MPP thing, if you don't stop it, look, people are attacking me. How come you are not talking like you used to talk and blah, blah, blah. Mm. Somebody has just sent me a message because of that. Okay, so, thank you. You know what? The question is, if I was to call people mm -hmm. and on this, uh, 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 electricity thing. Mm -hmm. If Ghanaians, we show a protest, okay, and, and even demonstrate. Do you know if I was to call for a demonstrate, it's only NDC people who will come. You can't say that for a fact. No, I'm telling you, it's a fact because I know. You know. I know. Look, look at up. Occupy Ghana. Mm. Look at uh, Fix the Country. Mm. Anytime any good and citizen, yen chia, yen chia no, any good citizen mm. decides to do something for some strange reason, the politicians will come and hijack it. Hmm. Because you can't even put, look, trade union, if you go to them to come, they are afraid of government in power, they won't show. So the average Ghanaian is also looking at, hey, see, Yehumia, Yebeka Seme Soporto. That is the problem. Nigeria, Nigeria, here. You remember when the four prices went up in Nigeria a few years ago? It wasn't about whether Babangida or Basanjo or whoever. It was about Nigeria. They mm -hmm. demonstrated. The prices came down. So Ghana, this is what we, we are not Ghanaians anymore. We are political. We are party people. Bella, Lord, I'll let you hold Bella. on. Let's take a quick break. I'll let you please hold on on this point that you want to make. And when we get back, we'll continue the conversation. We'll also go into the issue of inflation and the minister's response to that, saying that we're not the only African country that is suffering as a result of the global markets. About 41 other African countries are also suffering the same fate. We'll be right back. Welcome back. This is still TV3 New Day. It's the big issue. In the studios, I have Abbas Imo. He's a PRO for the GPRTU and also lawyer Kwame Janto, a member of the CPP. He's also the chairman for Political Affairs Committee and Kofi Kapito, the CEO of Consumer Protection Agency. We're just talking about uh, fuel prices in the country and transport fares that have hiked over time. Very shortly, we'll go into the conversation about inflation hitting 23.6% and the factors that have led to this. Of course, the Minister of Finance saying that we're not the only one. This inflation is imported. But before the lawyer wanted to make a point. And Bella, one of the things that we don't consider that increases cost is quality. Mm. If you don't give us quality roads, you need to find money to fix the roads all the time. Look, what type of vehicles do we use for public transport in this country? Mm. I think not second-hand vehicles. Yeah. What type of spare parts do we use in those vehicles? I didn't know second hand spare parts. Will those spare parts last? So today, you go and buy an alternator. If you bought a brand new one, if that was available, it will last you probably two, three years. Mm. You go and buy a second hand one, how long will it last you? That all goes into cost. Mm. So if GPR to you and transport uh, 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 operators, yeah, operators are saying that we need to put some percentage into our price. Doesn't it go for spare parts too? Second hand spare parts. Mm. Look at Abuso kind today. And even if you want to buy brand new spare parts, do you know how much money you will spend? Mm -hmm. And government sits and does nothing about it. It's part of the inflationary, uh, what do you call it? Mm. Cost that we have. And nobody's doing anything about it. And you, you, you buy second-hand spare parts as if you're buying brand-new spare parts. 
How does that work? Is in what even, country does it, that it's happen? It's not even the brand new aspect. It's not even the, 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 it's it's even the, the quality. Price. It's not, no, they will convince you that the second hand is better, is better than, than a brand new. Yeah, How? yeah <laughs> that's true. How? <laughs> well, well, let me explain. The, the fact of the case is uh, we must be fair to ourselves. We don't bring in quality spare parts. Mm. You buy a spare part, <laughs> fix it. Within one, two, three days, it's off. Mm. But if you so, buy the yes. used one, which is quality, the home from use. the original source, we'll which are better. Yes. When the white man doesn't we'll want the thing that he's throwing it away. Because it is of a quality. <laughs> so uh, at least we should have our people to make sure, quality, like the uh, lawyer yeah, is saying, yeah. quality items should be uh, bring to us. Okay. Like he yeah, has just said that if you don't what about you use good, good materials. What about car ties? Huh? Car uh, ties. Kwame, we have a rubber industry in this country. You know that are we it? saying, yeah. are we Let's saying, lawyer land, please. are we saying, we can't look at it and say, these car ties that are coming, some are winter ties, some are summer ties, some are ties for different seasons. It's not helping us on our rules. It's causing accidents. Let's see and put in a tie factory. But we had one. Did, did we, we not have it before? We had yes, one. Yes, yeah. ties. Yeah. ties. Did we not have mm -hmm. it before? Yes. <laughs> Why aren't we looking at those things we were manufacturing and start from that point going forward? Within the next 20 years, we'll be able to have manufactured everything in this country. And we are always importing, fitting away our foreign exchange. And government sits and does nothing about it. And is only interested in getting money here, getting money there. When the fabric of society is killing us. Which, I don't understand it. Which is why even inflation, now our minister says it's imported. Now inflation... No, before you come in, let okay. me... Uh, uh, Abbas, yeah. uh, apparently you met the minister of... Your chairman met the minister on Friday. Okay. Yeah, before and wow. then and then it was arranged that you meet on Wednesday. Wednesday. Uh, so he says uh, it's not right for you to say that they did not acknowledge. Okay. But at least they met the chairman on Friday. On Friday before he left. But that was when they wrote the second letter. No, no, no. But at least they 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 met, they met in person. I get him up. After Maybe. the second letter. Kofi. Well, at least meeting is meeting. But he said that they never acknowledged the 17th March <laughs> yeah. letter until they wrote another one uh, on the say, 6th of May. No, say, no, no, all I'm saying is, yeah. yes, the letter uh, probably was, say, not, my, was, my brother, was not responded to. My brother, okay. we are Ghanaians. Yes. The minister, I respect him a lot. Sure. He's a very kind man to all of us. Yeah, and you then say, he likes you. You say, let's call a speed, a speed. A speed. Not a I, I, I would have wished, mm -hmm. a deputy minister also came on air and was saying that uh, the decision we took was illegal. Mm. No, no, he, I, no, no, let no, me he didn't say that. Okay, okay. Brother, He's let, let him respond. To I this. say that a deputy minister also came on air you. and mm -hmm. said that the same the decision yeah. we took was illegal. Mm -hmm. It was just unfortunate. Mm -hmm. I was rather expecting them to. Oh, we are sorry. Yes, we were so busy that uh, it was an oversight mm -hmm. that would have ended everything. But if I'm right and you want to, uh, I mean, hold my neck, hold my neck to you. to change. My words, I, Abbas, I will never do that. Mm. And I believe that GPRU fraternity will also do the same. Okay. You see, so let's, mo let's make progress. Okay, let's move okay. Let's make progress. Let's okay. move. And nobody can force but, me but you to can, tell lies. But you Why is the truth is there? Well, 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 we're waiting. We're, we're waiting to see what the results of today's meeting will be. We are all praying for a very uh, reasonable or smooth okay. outcome of the meeting. Okay. We want peace. We all want to live in very, Absolutely. Yes. Inflation is at 23.6% as at April 2022, and this is the highest uh, since 2004, we are told. So an 18-year high. And the contributing factor is transport contributed the most, 33.5%. Household equipment and maintenance, 28.5%. Food and non-alcoholic beverages, 26.6%. And housing, water, electricity, and gas, 25.0%. Yesterday, the minister was responding to this, and he says that, well, the inflation rate at the moment, a good chunk of it, is imported and there are 41 african countries who are currently exposed to the same crisis that ghana faces and these crises are rising food prices rising energy prices and tightening financial conditions conditions that he says on the continent of course are called the dreaded f's and so it's not as if they have not done what they have to do to control the situation but these are imported factors that most countries are grappling with lawyer I'm in the AGI. Mm. Hmm? When we kicked against the benchmark price that they brought in, 
hasn't contributed to inflation. Mm. And the, 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 the finance minister is telling us that these imports have contributed to this, uh, what do you call it, uh, uh, high inflation. Mm. Are they not a contributory factor to it with this benchmark thing that they gave importers? When we should have been concentrating on manufacturing our own. Food prices have rocketed. Mm. Do we not have uh, uh, planting for food and jobs? Should that not be able to augment the rise in prices, at least the basic uh, prices? Why are we quiet on that? 1D1F. <laughs> I have a 1D1F. That is a different scenario altogether. Mm. Because as I keep saying, where 1D1F is concerned, we should have concentrated on those commodities that we have capital flight in. Sugar is a major challenge. Wheat is a major challenge. For sugar, right. we're told Commander Sugar Factory would be up and running in April. Rice. Yeah. yeah. In, the in president April. did tell us in that April. by April, yes. Why didn't we look at it 2017 when we came in? Why? If sugar is that important to us and we are expending so much money, why didn't we, why didn't we put the politics aside? Yes, they could have uh, 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 appreciated it. And why didn't we put that aside first and dealt with that afterwards and got that, got that into place? Look, let me tell you something. Co uh, uh, um, Commander, Commander yeah. Kwame Nkrumah didn't even want to put a sugar factory in Komenda. Because when they did the research, soils there were not adequate for sugar cane. Mm. But at the time, the people had nothing there. Definitely. So when it, when it came... He had no choice but to put it there. And he did. And it was, it was working. Then he did a second one in Asuchari, mm -hmm. where there were good soils mm -hmm. for what you call it. Didn't it help? Didn't it augment it? So if the previous government has put in a plant for sugar, uh, for, for sugar, why bastardize it and leave it all this while? When farmers gave up some of the crops they were growing and went into sugar cane. If that factory was there, you could have gotten sugar cane from all areas of the country to manufacture. The president said that the, the, the building was started from the roof instead of the foundation. And he was referring to how president, former President Mahama uh, decided to set up the Commander Sugar Factory. He and the president was playing politics. Fix the place the without president, the president providing was, the president was playing farms. The president was playing politics there. And why do I say that? Once you take over its assets and liabilities, there's something called perpetual secession. You take it over and you do it. Don't complain about it. Just do it. Then maybe we come back to how they procured the, the, the what do you call it. But the people need it. The people require it. Rice today. Do you know we have basmati rice in this country? We grow in this country. Mm. That break, break, uh, what is that break, break even levy thing that they did mm -hmm. for importers has now affected even our own rice production. What are we doing to stave imports of some of these things and let ours grow? Even in the oil industry today, have we been able to get local companies to be part of the industry? So if government came out with a policy and said, look, we've had 10 years of oil production. Today, in the next five years, what we are going to do, shallow water production is only going to be left for Ghanaians. Ghanaians, build your capacity. Because mm. shallow water is not as expensive as deep and uh, ultra deep waters. Mm. Don't you think Ghanaians will pick up? Has Nigeria done it? Has Nigeria done it? And although the Nigerian local companies that are producing are doing 20,000 barrels, 30,000 barrels, uh, uh, 15,000 barrels, it has made millionaires out of the local people. And the money there goes into their banks. And the banks have enough money to now uh, rent out. And it brings down some of the costs. Are we doing it in Ghana? And today, in the oil industry, we are likely to have stranded uh, assets. Because when was the last time we did exploration? The last four years. Have we done any exploration? Look, I, I don't understand the way we look at these things. And as I keep saying, it's not a party thing. And please, nobody should tell me that I'm against government. I'm against what should be done is, and is not done. Mm. Bring people on board. Bring people on board. And sometimes some of the issues mm. are so pertinent and so dire that sometimes it's the president who has to step in.
I say, guys, stop it. Sit. This GPR2 issue. Do you think if the president himself realized that, look, my people don't seem to be able to do this thing. Come, all of you sit around the table. Get the vice president involved. This and this and this and this is what the situation is. This I won't do. Vice president, take it over. Don't you think they will listen? Because you see, irrespective of everything at all, people still respect the authority of the presidency. Kofi, so even at this point, in the face of rising inflation rates, ECG says that we want a 148 percent increase. <laughs> if you don't give us give us that increment now. If we come back again, we'll still add that 148 plus different charges. And we're at risk of not being able to provide electricity uh, to households. Ghana Water Company says, give us that 334% increase. Otherwise, we will shut down and we cannot provide water. You know, let me I speak as a consumer. Not, not a technocrat like mm. Pami here, who they, they look at the numbers. To me, when they talk about inflation, the consumer does not even understand what inflation is. Mm. If you talk about inflation up to 26 or going to 40 percent, the question is when I go to the market, when I went yesterday, this bottle was one CD. Mm -hmm. Today is two CDs. So now your 26 percent inflation, I don't understand it. All I know is it's a 100 percent increase. Mm. So those are the realities facing the Ghanaian. The technocrats can play with the, I told somebody when you talk about macro and micro, mm -hmm. I say when you go to World Bank, Go and tell them that. But in Ghana, tell me how you are going to reduce petrol from 10 cities mm -hmm. to 9 cities. That is what the Ghanaian wants to hear. Okay. And that is what other jurisdictions, they do. The, the average person doesn't get himself bought into all these okay. nitty gritties. Yeah. It's somebody's job to do it so that it will reflect in their pocket. Mm. Talking about ECG. ECG says they want 100. 48%. 48 percent mm. uh, some of the their, their justifications to me uh, they should look at within first mm. when on your books you realize that people owe you so much mm. that you are not able to collect so it has caused you for you not to be able to take your books to a bank or a creditor to tell, tell them to give you money for investment. So you are coming to tell me, the Ghanaian, who buys electricity, mm -hmm. that now you become the investor. Give me the money in advance. Okay, then I'll be able to give you the services that you need. Are you going to give me dividend on the money that I have given you? I'm looking at it from the practical sense. Yeah. Okay, yes, they have a challenge. And every time I've worked with PRC for a very long time, it's the same reason. Pay more, better service will come. We pay, we don't get any better services. The question I'm asking is, what even necessitated for them to... You see, it is strange. I mean, how can people come up with that... Give me 148% increase, 334%. Mm. I've never heard this. I don't even think in Azerbaijan, mm -hmm. you know, somewhere that we are 10 times better than them, will tell their people to give them 334%. Look, if Ghana, uh, electricity company of Ghana, mm. and that is a fact because the government does not allow them to do their job. I'll give you a typical example. You remember when PDS was coming in? Mm. The Millennium Development thing. Yeah. MIDA. Mm -hmm. They put a group together. They've done it in India. They've done it in Uganda. Mm. So I was part of the de delegation okay. that we went to India and Uganda. Then we saw that what we are being asked to do, if ECG will be allowed to do the same, probably the concession might not even be necessary. Okay. When we go to Uganda, the, the director of finance was bold enough. I said, my brother from Ghana, typical East African. He said, look, every ministry in this 
our country prepares the budget, including utility. But because they know government, business, they don't use the money to pay utility. They use it to travel first class, business class, workshop. So I told uh, the equivalent of electricity company in Uganda, they are called Umeme. Mm -hmm. I say I told the man, if they owe, take the light. Mm. So the ECG came to Ghana. They wanted to flex their muscles small. Then they went and disconnected some polytechnics, if you guys remember, mm -hmm. and said few installations. Come and see Ghanaians. Hey, you can't do that. So they chickened. Mm. Okay. The question is, why are you and I, mm -hmm. we use prepaid. Mm -hmm. we, the moment your credit finish, you have to, yeah, go, no. you, you have yeah. to go and buy another one. Mm. My biggest problem, we don't allow ECG mm -hmm. to collect revenue when they need to. I give a specific example. When you say we don't allow, which government. is what? Government. Okay. Government. Because it was in the news that Ghana Airport Company, mm -hmm. Old. a company that does most of its business in US dollars, mm -hmm. how can they owe 49 million Ghana cities? You owe, you, you, they don't even let, allow you to owe. They would even cut your light out before you, you, you get to the credit thing. Mm -hmm. So, uh, uh, if you go to the barracks, most of the police barracks, I ask myself, how come every police wife is making ice blocks? Mm. The differences are the barracks. Yeah. Go and see what happens there. The military camps. Go and see what happens there. But, and then, you know what annoys me the most? There are some big, big, big men, as we call them in Ghana, living on an acre and a half Two acre properties in Ghana who are paid over 50,000 Ghana cities a month. Public servants. Yes. If, if, if even the private ones are still quasi government owned. Mm. Okay. They get this house for free. Mm. The benefits here and there, and they still don't pay electricity. Why? So even the president should pay electricity? Oh, ask. In the, in, in the best countries, mm -hmm. I told you, yeah, check. Okay. The White House pays. Because like I said, the budget mm -hmm. is prepared, including utility. Mm. So if you, if, how can the ministry not prepare his budget with, it, with including? Mm. You remember not too long ago, uh, at the, under the, uh, the presidency of uh, uh, may, you so, may you so rest in peace, Atamels, mm -hmm. who declared that every MMD should be fitted with a prepaid meter. Yeah. What has happened? But now they are forcing Ghanaians, ECG, that everybody should have a prepaid meter, which is fine. I agree. So that at least you pay your bill on time. But this will have a problem. ECG is telling me that they have some places called the no-go area. Mm. Okay, that they are even afraid. Richard. Why they say no-go area? They are That's, afraid to go and collect. Ah, some, somebody went to go and disconnect the neighborhood pulled the ladder. <laughs> <laughs> well, you so, know. So if they cannot address these problems, no, how then see, do we? No, you see, my, my biggest yeah. problem is if, and I'm not saying that the police officers who died, their lives are not, I, 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 of course. their family are begged them. Mm. If two police officers got killed because they were guiding a bank or they were part of an Amri uh, of a, a bullion bank a bullion bank thing yeah and all of a sudden ghana is collapsing mm. we put military men military men on with ak for 47 cents sometimes even machine guns to follow a private business the banks are private business because the Bank of Ghana that belongs to us has a proper bullion okay. vat. It was decreed that by, I think, last, the end of last year, they every should. bank... They all should. Even that, they said they were having challenges even um, clearing these banks. I, I, I know somebody, we, we have who, to go I know somebody who brought some that he claims that he can't claim because, I mean, what, what yeah, are we doing to ourselves? Because they weren't being given the chance. But we have to go, unfortunately. About, so you're meeting government today. What time? God willing. God willing by 5. By 5 p.m. Yeah.
And so you communicate to the rest of the public what oh, happened? No, this is not for public consumption now. Okay. Uh, after the main thing, mm -hmm. whatever happens. Happens, yeah. you let us know. Yes, of course. Uh, we might have embarrassed certain things. If they render apology to us, that, yeah, we are sorry. Ah, but you are going to reduce. You want an apology? That, that should He's have going been. to reduce. Is that all you need, an apology from government? That, that should have been between us over the bed by then. The outcome is safe. Mm -hmm. And what is the outcome? What is the problem? Yeah. The current 20% upward adjustment that we came up with. Mm. And the hula balloon from the GRTCC, etc., yeah. etc. Et yes, of course, if we are able to address it, address it well. But you want an apology from government? Uh, yes, we, we wouldn't want to be seen as uh, coming up with lies to the okay. public. Okay. That is what we wouldn't want to. But if we, government also says that reduce... The, the percentage. I mean, Kofi has said I, it that I, at least I, I take have some five I am pleading with him. I have also Would you agree? I'm pleading with you him. You and the public <laughs> that, yes, we are into serious commercial transport business. Mm -hmm. If only do, they can reduce the crude oil, say, at least from the current situation, to about eight points. The president said they can't do anything. Eight, eight yes, points. yes. If president it's about eight cities there, about so, then you so agree. You forget the about president president said that. So this meeting might it. not be fruitful. Oh, it will be fruitful. It will be fruitful. We peg... We pay the twenty percent based on our business okay. understanding. But All if right. the president well, said right. they can't do anything about the price build up, why do they then expect the drivers the to do something about their money? Well, question for the gods. Yes. Question for the gods. We'll wait and see what uh, comes out of this meeting. The GPRTU and Consent Drivers Association they are meeting governments later today. But thank you so and much. No. Oh, and Consumer Protection Agency. Yes. Say. Thank you so much Go for joining us on the show this morning. Alaji Abbas Imoro, he's a PRO, uh, head of communications, if you can say, uh, for the GPRT. And lawyer uh, Kwame Janto is the chairman for the Political Affairs Committee, also a member of the CPP. Uh, Mr. Kofi Kapito will also be in this meeting. He is the CEO of the Prote uh, Consumer Protection Agency. We'll be back with some more later. Sefa will join us. We'll talk about her award on the night of the VGMAs and more. Keep watching. We'll be right back.